Hi, Ed Diaz here. In today's video, we're going to demonstrate how to set up your Roland Phantom to work with Ableton Live. All right, let's get started. So the Phantom is a USB audio MIDI interface for a multitude of digital audio workstations or DAWs, one of those being Ableton Live. So if I want to get started recording the Phantom over USB uh, using uh, audio and MIDI, Here's are some of the steps that I need to do. So first off, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to go to our Roland website and I'm going to go to products. I'm going to go to synthesizers. I'm going to go to performance workstation. And once I am here, I'm going to choose one of the phantoms. It, it doesn't matter which one, uh, but choose yours. That's fine. And next, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom and I am going to choose Downloads. Once I am in the Downloads area, and I'll make it a little bit bigger, I want to go ahead and make sure I grab the proper drivers for your computer platform. So you see here we have some drivers for Windows right there, and also the Mac, uh, different Mac OSs. Now, one thing about the Windows th that's really great is that with a Phantom, you could just plug it into the win to Windows and it will recognize the Phantom and find the drivers for you. So if we were to click inside here, it just lets you know that it's going to tell you that you don't even you don't need to download anything. Is there even a download? Okay, so there's the drivers if you do need them. Okay, uh, now if we were to go back into the Apple side of things, we definitely need to know what operating system we are using. So inside my particular Mac, I'm going to go to the top left of my Mac here. I'm going to hit the Apple button and I'm going to hit about this Mac. Once I have that there, it's going to pop it up on the screen and it's going to tell me the version Mac that I'm using, the OS that I'm using. And my particular Mac, I'm using version 11.2.3. So I'll go back over here and this is the one that I'll need. Uh, version uh, from 1.1.0.3 for Mac OS 11. That's what we know. So that's where you'll find that. So once I have that, I just need to download the drivers and hit install. But once again, make sure that your Mac has accepted it in the security uh, settings. So once again, I'll go to my Mac and I'll hit the Apple. I'll go to system preferences and I will go ahead and go to security and privacy right there. And I will go ahead and click on the lock and put my password and I will make sure that selected is the Apple Store and identified developers. So Roland being one of those developers. So that's something good to know. And if you don't do this within 30 minutes of uh, installing the driver, it will be kicked out. Just FYI. That's just something that you should know. And we've had users have that in the past. It's not a Roland problem. It's not an Apple problem. It's just something that you need to know. Okay. Now that everything is working great, uh, let's go ahead and set up the Phantom to work with Ableton. So first off, I need to make sure and press the menu button inside my Phantom, go into the system and make sure, and I'll move it up, that I'm in the general tab and the Phantom is set to vendor. When it is in vendor, it's going to allow the USB to send MIDI and audio. If your Phantom is set to generic, it will only send generic MIDI, just FYI. So you would select vendor and you would press write, which was system write that into your Phantom. So there we go. That sh should be it right there. Now inside Ableton, we will go to the preferences here, go into preferences. And this is the same thing, whether you're using Mac or PC, we will go into our preferences here and we will make sure we have the Phantom selected as the audio input device and the Phantom selected as the audio output device. Notice 32 ins and six outs. The, so we have your main outs, you have your sub out one and your sub out two. And then we would configure just this first time because Ableton will remember these configurations. Make sure that we go ahead and turn all of these inputs on. That I have it in there. And then Ableton even allows you to go ahead and type in what you want. So if I wanted to, I could spend the time and say, okay, that's zone one, that's zone two, so on and so forth, and just kind of just set it up that way. And Ableton will remember that. So that way I can easily find all my zones in there. 
Okay, now I will go over to my output configuration and do the same thing. And on this particular one, I already put uh, mains is one and two. I'll go ahead and put sub out one, so that way I always know. And this one I'll put a sub out two. Okay, so that's uh, pretty cool. And okay, so that's great. Ableton knows that right in there. And that's pretty much all I have to do at this point, just for the basic setup. We'll talk about DAW control in a subsequent video, so stay tuned for that. But this is the main thing that we need to do so that way uh, Ableton knows how to interact with the Phantom. So I'll close those settings right there. And now if we were to go into, say, like an audio track, and I say external in, and it's it knows and then now I can go ahead and say oh okay here's all the individual inputs so remember the phantom has 32 but technically it's it's 16 stereos and so remember I went in here and named those inputs zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 all the way to zone 16 I can quickly have that correspond to my phantom and I know exactly what I'm recording if I'm recording audio right there so that's great Similar thing with the MIDI. If I'm recording MIDI, I would go in here and say, hey, it's MIDI from the Phantom. I would tell it what particular MIDI channel, and generally the MIDI channels uh, will go correspond to their uh, zones in here, unless you change it inside the scene, but that's a whole other thing. Generally, they will match, so you know that there. So you would tell it what channel of uh, from the MIDI it's getting from the Phantom, and then you would say MIDI 2, after it's recorded, you can go ahead and route that MIDI to the Phantom or some other thing, whatever in there. So that's something that's good to know. So these are just the basic configurations that I wanted you to be aware of. Once again, the most important thing is to make sure your Phantom is in vendor mode and then go ahead and make sure you choose the Phantom as the audio at in and audio output devices. Uh, go ahead and select, turn on all of those inputs and turn on and label those outputs. All right, so I hope this helps you out. Take your time, set this up so we can get rocking and rolling with Ableton Live and the Roland Phantom. I hope this helps you out. You guys take care and we'll talk to you later.